Here we have Monty. So this is before we made any changes or I gave you any feedback. So body position is pretty good. Your hips might be just a little bit low. Uh, head position is good. You're uh, turning to breathe comfortably. You're not raising your head when you turn to breathe and uh, staying pretty even. Your extension with both arms is pretty good as well as your rotation. Most people have room for improvement in the extension. You're doing a good job here though. The way I kind of judge that is where is your shoulder relative to your head? Is there a space in between your, your shoulder and your head when you're at the apex of the extension? And there's not much room there. So you, you're probably reaching out as far, almost as far as you can. It looked like it was a little better with your right than on your left. So on your left, you're extending forward and down. On the right, you're extending mostly forward. The issue, and you'll see this more on the underwater version, the issue with extending forward and down is that you, you just miss out on some of the water that you could otherwise pull or grab if you were to extend directly forward. Kick looks uh, pretty good. You have a common thing a lot of runners or people that come from a run background have where your ankles don't seem to be quite as flexible. So your feet are sort of pointing down as you're kicking. So you don't want to actively, uh, you don't want to actively do plantar flexion, but you could try and do some ankle flexibility exercises out of the water uh, where you like lean back on your ankles to try and create a little more flexibility. The, the reason there is when you kick, you want that foot to really kind of snap down. And if, you're, if your ankle's inflexible, it's not gonna happen that much. So, from this angle, looking at the rotation and seeing if your hips remain in your streamline, and you are doing a good job of rotating and your hips aren't aren't going side to side, so they are staying in your streamline, so th that's good as well. And then from this angle, what you can see is where does your hand, oh, sorry about that, where does your hand reach when uh, when you're extending forward? And your, your hands are going pretty much directly in front of your shoulders, which is exactly where you want to be. So that is good as well. Now this angle, this is where you can really see the catch or the catch style. So two things that I notice. Uh, number one is you're extending a little deeper than I would recommend. So I would try and extend forward as well as possible. And then your catch is what I call a straight arm pull, where you're essentially you're pulling straight down and straight back. There's no elbow flexion. There's not a, a, a bend at the elbow when viewed from the side. So the way you, you're going to want to work on that, it's called the high elbow catch, is with a lot of the drills that we went over. But the motion starts from the shoulder. So you shrug your shoulder forward and inward or forward and almost down. That'll help create... Uh, the pull motion, which you'll see the, uh, excuse, I gotta rephrase that. Your elbow will pop up, your hand and forearm will angle down, and then you'll be able to leverage the water that way. The problem with the way you're swimming right here is that the first third of the stroke, you're just kind of pushing water down. You're not really pulling water water back or pulling your body forward. So that's the that's going to be the main fix. Your hips are low, hips and legs a little low, so you're already looking down as you're swimming. Hopefully, as your speed increases, your hips will come up somewhat. And here, again, good, where you're extending to is good as far as relative to the shoulder in front of you, but I would like to just see you extend up a little more, and that's what you're doing right here. So this is after we talked a lot about the extension and, and the catch and everything. So this looks a lot better. This, just by reaching forward and up a little more, has really created a, a more streamlined body position. 
and you're swimming faster as well. Uh, some of that's some of that's because of the body position. The, the more streamlined you are, the faster you'll be. But you're also doing more of a catch or a high elbow catch or early vertical forearm catch. So that means you're just getting better leverage on the water with each pull. On this one, I think I might have mentioned to you to try and finish each stroke as well. So you, you can see you're getting like a complete stroke here. You're getting really long extension, good forward extension, a pretty good underwater catch, and then finishing each, each stroke. looks a lot better. So the one arm drill and catch up drill, hopefully I, I covered those with you. If not, you can uh, look those up online. Uh, and doggy paddle drill are the main drills now that are going to work because you don't need to work on rotation by, by any means, uh, but you just want to work on the, the catch technique. And this is very good. You can see you're getting the catch. You see how that hand and forearm sort of angle down at the beginning of the stroke. You're going to try and try and eliminate that little back and forth motion that a lot of people have. It's sort of common to do that. You want to really just pull back. That's it. You're getting a good catch on that one. That one was pretty good. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. So a lot of these are, are good as well. Uh, this technique just takes practice, so you know, repeatedly go to the pool, do your drills, think about catch, and pull hard. That's the other aspect of it. This is catch-up drill. So catch-up drill is really good for working on the extension, and then part two is a catch. One-arm drill is really good for just working on the catch technique as well as being a strength-building drill in the sense that you're isolating that one side and making it do all the work for a longer period of time rather than getting a break as you go side to side. So I, I recall this session. I mean, you made a lot of progress. You, you, get, you were faster by the end of the, the session and really looked a lot better. So... Hopefully this, this will be a good reminder for you. So after this, I've got a series of still frames that are from uh, before we made any comments, just so you can see what you looked like then. So this was entering, after you turn to breathe, and then entering on the left, and then see how you kind of extended fairly deep in the water. You're like a foot under the underneath, underneath the surface of the water. And there's a little bit of a pause and glide here. Great rotation, so you're really rotated over here on your side, which is excellent. Uh, and then this is a straight arm pull, like, you know, really good example of it where you're, there's no bend at the elbow. So you would, you would want that hand and forearm going, angling differently than what the upper arm is doing earlier in the stroke. You would want your hand, your hand and your forearm angling down while your upper arm is still extending forward. And then the right arm... So good extension, good rotation. So you know you, you got no problems on the extension and rotation. And then this same thing, same sort of pull. So this first third of the stroke, you're really pushing water mostly down and doing a little bit of pulling back. It's not till that frame right there where you're really pulling water forward, or excuse me, pulling your body forward, pushing water backward. So it's all going to be about getting that shoulder rotation and getting that high elbow. Hope that helps. Thank you.